everybody, Scout Crafter here again. It's uh, Mishmash Monday. We got a big mosh today, a lot of things to talk about. And uh, we also have, you can see, it's uh, the summer has started here in the Northern Hemisphere. So now um, this weekend was the longest day of the year. And every day from now till December, we'll start getting shorter every day, the daylight. And um, like I said, we got a lot to get to, so let's get downstairs and start Okay, today. first off on today's mosh, I had to make a trip to the cemetery. You know, this weekend was Father's Day and whatnot. And, uh, you know, we have a few cemeteries here in Queens. I don't know if you uh, are familiar. And, you know, cemeteries are funny, aren't they? You know, they can re really vary in uh, size and scope and what they're like. And, you know, some are small little private cemeteries and other ones are big, large affairs. Let's uh, let's check out this one here in Queens. Where okay, I we're over at the, the cemetery here. And, you know, and when you live in a big city or here in Queens, you know, the people are dying to get into these cemeteries, literally. And you could see how crowded they get. But, you know, a cemetery can be a beautiful place. And there are such, especially an old part of the cemetery, you know. I'm not crazy about the new part. They're stacking people in one on top of the other. But, uh, look, let me show you some of the beautiful parts of this cemetery and how peaceful it is. You know, some beautiful statues like this one here. Just imagine when, you know, when that was made and how much that, and look at the difference in the gravestones you know they have these modern gravestones that are totally different but look at some of these and you know some of these gravestones like here you know, grave markers are they're almost uh 10 feet high now this particular cemetery is called saint mary's it's in uh like i said this one's in queens and you can see and they do a beautiful job of, of keeping the grounds up and look at some of these old growth trees and things like that you don't even see you know, in many areas. And a, and a lot of the trees in this cemetery were decimated uh, from some beetle that got here a while ago. But a lot of them, a lot of these trees are, are still maintained. And, and again, because they're so separate, they do grow really well. You know, one thing nice about the cemetery also is that it does have a wide variety of birds. And here's the North American Mockingbird. And you can see it does uh, inhabit quite a large area of North America. And uh, this mockingbird can sing up to 200 songs to keep other birds away from its nesting site. And a lot of times they'll attack you for it. Here's one we're listening to. Look how nice he sounds. Now, on the way home from the cemetery, I was uh, driving down. I passed a church. Uh, I didn't even know there was a church there, it's, but it was an older church. And, and in front of the church, they were throwing out an organ. And uh, <laughs> this is, you know, I always have to stop whenever I see something interesting in the trash. I have to check this organ out. Let me ask you a question. Would you have... Would you have picked this organ up? Would you have looked at it? I mean, it's pretty interesting, isn't okay, it? Okay, for today's tool project, we are down to the last Abe Elias tool of the ones he sent. And uh, let's get to it. It's a it's a pipe wrench. Let's see what we can do. Let's have some okay, fun. Okay, this is the last of the tools that Abe sent over. And uh, this one here is a Gray Bonnie. You can see here, Gray Bonnie. It's made in Canada. We never, ever see these here in the States. I haven't anyway. This is the first one I've ever seen. It's a standard uh, pipe wrench. You know, they're all very similar in design and make. And you can see here, this one was, you know, painted. Uh, this is, I guess, the original factory paint. You can see how this is uh, done up. You can see they even painted the... <laughs> They painted the neural, you know, it's, it's, this could be a pretty wrench, but right now it's just a plane. You wouldn't even look at it, right? So let's see what we can do. Let's have some fun with this, uh, because, uh, that's what we do here. Now, as you can see, our first step was to remove this rivet. And when you do it right, you can get the whole rivet out in one piece, even though we drilled right through the center of it, as you can see here. And that was able to loosen it up. Now, we could take the whole uh, wrench apart here. And uh, now, all we have to do is get rid of 
this one here but that you want to make sure you get rid of all that paint around be trying before you get that out so let's do that Here we are just after the paint stripper. You can see what that does. I love when they paint tools because that preserves the tool. So it is all preserved. Now we're going to take it to the wire brush. Okay, here's our post wire brush evaluation. You can see everything is coming out real nice, you know. No surprises here. You know, forge marks around the handle edges. You see that? You know, that's typical. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, the teeth, a little child, it could be used a little bit of work. Um, the head, the sides here, just giving you an idea what it looks like. And now, we'll take this over. Uh, it cleaned in there with the round wire brush. And of course, the, this knurled nut is in great shape. Did the inside too with the round brushes. Now we're going to make it real nice. You see the original grime marks here from the, from, they just ran it through real quick. And lastly, this always here, this part here that the back or belly of a wrench always is something that you, you'd notice. See that, see what that looks like there? Take a good look at that. Cause this really will make or break a, you know, a restoration on how that looks. Okay, I'm up in Connecticut. Had to do a couple things like put up that uh, bird table, but I wanted to show you something. I'm up at the uh, an a, a abandoned Christmas tree farm. This thing's been for sale for quite a while, and um, it's a it's a few acres of what used to be a Christmas tree farm. Let me show you some of these trees that uh, what happens to a Christmas tree farm when they just let it go. Okay, so these were the Christmas trees. Remember, they're usually about six foot or eight foot or something. This is what happens when you let them go for years and years without any kind of maintenance. Look at them all. Look at all these beautiful Christmas trees that have gone. Look at this huge, beautiful Christmas trees that now, because they haven't been cut down, you know, they just overgrew. And then other things came in and but I always love this place you see if you look above here you see all them on the top those are all like beautiful what used to be Christmas trees and I, this is what I was thinking I might want to do on my property is put some Christmas trees or something up there uh, you got to be careful this is big tick area here this is where the Lyme disease started so you always got to be careful but I always get a, a kick out look at Look at all these beautiful, what used to be Christmas trees. And look, look what happens if you just let them go. Isn't that something? I love, I love, you know, I love pine trees, but this is some area, isn't it? Now, you know my favorite part. Remember what this wrench looked like before we started. And we're calling this project done. Wow. This one came out great, didn't it? Look how classic that looks. I know. I know Abe's color is blue, but this thing was just screaming for some Scout Crafter red. Look at that. Filled in the letters there, filled in there, filled in here, filled in up here. Uh, everything is just silky smooth, you know. I mean, 
it's the way it uh, it really should be and it's uh look remember the handle was all messed up and on both sides with the forging lines and remember this now you remember here what i was telling you about uh the back how that makes a huge difference right look at that and that's uh same with the top here it makes always a big difference just a, a lovely wrench did the you know replace the rivets with the uh, two screws and you know how we do that uh, threaded tube in there and uh just a lovely wrench and i think this is a perfect end to the five wrenches that abe sent over now these are the original five tools that abe sent over months ago and uh, we just got to them and here are the five wrenches or five tools that abe sent over all done i'll be uh, wrapping these up sending them back and uh, it was a fun project. Just goes to show you why this hobby is so great. You can take tools that, you know, they don't have to be great tools, but you can have a, a lot of fun and you can really, I told you if you do one a month at the, you know, at the end of the year, you got 12 tools that are all restored. So it, it's a lot of fun, this hobby. Everybody should get into it. Okay, this was uh, quite a mosh, wasn't it? We've been all over the place today. I enjoyed this one. Um, in closing, I have one other thing to talk about, and that is uh, every once in a while, you know, you find somebody on uh, YouTube and you get in on what I like to call the ground floor. You know, when you subscribe, when nobody else really heard of them yet, but then they become big, but you were one of the first subscribers. Well, I have a channel that I found that I, I, uh, I think it's going to go pretty big, and uh, I want you to get in on the ground floor. Just so happens he's one of our group, too, but he has a terrific channel. And um, the channel is called Right On with John Crane. And I'll have a link in the description. Uh, go check out his channel. He's uh, less than 100 subscribers, and trust me, in a few months, when he explodes, you're going to be saying, "Wow, I, I subscribe! I was one of the first subscribers to him." And I, and it's always good to get in on the ground floor, isn't it? Anyway, uh, thanks very much for tuning in. I uh, hope you have a great week. Take care now. Talk to you soon. Bye bye.